Today we're going to look at hardware and topologies with regards to networks. I'll pause here, I'll give you a chance just to have a quick look at what there is um, that's different between these two and what there is the same, so if you want to have a think about some comparisons. So specification content, we're looking today at the hardware needed to connect standalone computers into uh, a network. There are some examples of different pieces of hardware, so wireless access points, routers or routers, depending on how you want to pronounce it, switches, network interface controllers or cards, and transmission media, as well as two of the topologies, so star and mesh. So we're looking to be able to understand what is uh, each piece of hardware is used for, the advantages and disadvantages of two types of topologies, as well as understanding um, of some of the networks in a given scenario. So first of all, what is a topology? So a topology is, is effectively the map of a network. So it's how the devices are connected, how they're laid out in order for our um, network to be understood. Now, each of the devices or pieces of hardware we refer to as a node. Now, a node is just a, a way of saying a device in a network, and I'm using, you're gonna use the term nodes throughout this presentation. And there's a, different, a whole host of different types of topologies of a network. We're gonna be looking just at star and mesh, but there are ring, bus, and amongst some others as well. But star and mesh is what we're interested in today. So star topology, you'll see that you have a number of nodes around a central point of communication. Now it's not necessarily fixed to say what that central point of communication is. There are some different pieces of hardware that can do this job. But ultimately a star topology, as you can kind of see, gets its name from its similar sort of uh, patterning to that star. So you can see that in this image, we have a number of computers, some of which are laptops and so forth, and printers and file servers and so forth, all connected to a single piece of hardware, which is called a switch in this case. But I'll talk about the switches and that uh, in a bit. Now, with that being said, this sort of topology is most suited to places like homes or educational establishments, somewhere where data um, needs to be transferring around in a sort of really quick sort of fashion. So they tend to be high performance networks. In a mesh topology, we've got all of the devices generally have at least one or more connections. So you can see we've got two examples here. We have a partial mesh and a full mesh. So in the top picture on this right hand side, we've got a partial mesh. Now what the partial mesh means is the fact that not every device is connected to every other device, but they do generally have at least two connections, which means data has multiple routes that it can travel through. In a full mesh network, every device has a direct connection to every other device on the network. Now mesh networks are great because they give us the opportunity to um, still manage our network if a device fails. So in a scenario, either it be a full mesh or a partial mesh where a single device fails. So if we're looking at this partial mesh and we would say that this device here were to fail, you can still transfer data in and around the network without much issue. In a full mesh, similarly is true. Now, there are some considerations in the fact that the, both of these types of mesh networks can take an awful lot of work and cabling to get set up. So you've got all of those devices connected to each other. And there isn't as such a single point where all the data passes through. So if I want to send a message from one device to another, you'll find that that message has to go through several other devices to get to its destination. Whereas in a star topology, it goes through that central point of communication and then is distributed to the end destination. Again, I'll leave this table, uh, and it might be worthwhile pausing the slide here, have a little look at the advantages and disadvantages of both a star and a mesh topology. Again, now moving on to hardware. So wireless access points. So wireless access points, you will have probably a wireless access point in your house that will be built into the box that is provided, you, provided to you by your internet provider. So whether it be T, Sky, Virgin, whoever, they will send you a box that's got a router built into it that, um, as well as a wireless access point. In school, we have wireless access points dotted around. And if you have a little look in uh, our normal teaching rooms, you'll see that these white boxes are pinned to the walls. And this is what transmits a wireless signal. And this wireless signal doesn't do anything beyond connecting you to a local network. Routers, routers will be something that you'll have at home. A router will be the device that transmits all the data around your network in a smart way. Now, what I mean by a smart way is that it knows every device that is connected to your network um, and it will pass packets of data around your network to the correct devices. And it's worthwhile commenting that a router's responsibility is simply to connect two networks. So your router at home connects your LAN, your local area network, all the devices in your home across to the internet. So it's actually joining those two networks together. 
Switches, switches have a slightly different job, but there are some similarities to routers. So a switch ultimately directs packets between devices that are connected to it. So in this scenario, you can see on the back of this switch, we've got a number of ethernet ports. Devices that are plugged into those will be able to communicate directly with each other. So the switch is ultimately a bit like a, a postman who will just take a letter and pass it along to its recipient. So it's just receiving and passing along data. Remember that the router transfers data between networks, the switch transfers data between devices, okay? Network interface cards then. So network interface cards are generally speaking nowadays built into most devices. You may find them as expansion cards, as you can see on the image on the right, but quite often you'll find them built into devices. And ultimately these are the devices that allow computer systems to communicate with other networks. So we can see in this example of a laptop, it's given us uh, an ethernet socket on the bottom left picture. On a mobile phone, you won't have an ethernet socket, but you will have a Wi-Fi receiver allowing you to then obviously communicate across those networks. Transmission media is where we're talking about the ways in which we communicate on a network. Now this is two physical types of transmission media. You could consider Wi-Fi to be a tra transmission uh, medium as a method of transferring data. But generally speaking, when we're talking about transmission media, we're talking about our traditional sort of ethernet cables, which we refer to as twisted copper wire. So in an ethernet cable, you'll find that there is copper cabling that is um, relatively cheap, has a reasonable enough performance for our sort of current needs. And we can span up to hundred meters, which is plenty for an on-site network. However, when you start to get to a point when you're thinking about the fact that you might be communicating with computers that are you know, in and around the town, this suddenly becomes a situation where actually that ethernet cable may not be the best choice. I mean, that's because over the course of, or as, as we sort of go and have much longer ethernet cables, you'll end up with things like resistance um, from the copper cabling and so forth, which means we end up with a poorer signal being transmitted. And this is where fiber optic cable comes in. So the most recent sort of technology is fiber optic cables, which whilst they're more expensive, they do perform significantly better and have a much greater range where they work. Now, obviously, fiber optics working through glass tubes, they are slightly more sort of fragile than ethernet cables, but it is a trade-off between performance, cost, and everything else that goes with that. 